right. Hey, man. Um, shout out to Wom, to the elect. I want to start by giving all the praise and sound and glory to whom rightfully belongs, which is Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Madash. You know, Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. All right? Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are not so called white men, they are so called black men. Double honors to the apostles and Salakia. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone at Ruel. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. You know, in this lesson, all right, you know, it's going into um, the fact that these heathens, they're not equal to us, you know? Because you got this misconception in the world, all right, that um, the heathen nations, are equal, to, uh, or that everybody's equal, you know? That's something the so-called white man teaches in school. You know, you remember being in school, you see in the, um, you know, you see in the, uh, you know, you see in pretty much, you know, the, the designs of all types of races and, national, and ethnicities of people, you know, holding hands together, you know? Everybody's not equal. You see the nations, they're not equal to us, man, you know? And the Christian church teaches that. See, we're not all equal just because, ah, it's a lot. It's around, you know, some nature right now. But just because we, um, well, I got food a little bit. All right, but just because, you know, we, uh, you know, have the, uh, you know, just because, you know, we have skin, blood, bones, doesn't mean that we're the same. All right? You see, the nations, they could never be Israelites. And there's scriptures that prove it. See, these Christian churches, they, you know, want to go with John 3.16 and this, that, and, you know, in different scriptures, twisting it to, to uh, you know, to try to say that everybody's equal. We're not equal, man. All right? So, I'm going to actually start with John 3.16, but I want to get some other scriptures in the Old Testament as well. But, um, so St. John, chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All right? And they tried to use that to say everybody's equal, you know, the Lord loves everybody, God loves everybody, you know? No. Okay? You know? There is no equality of these heathen nations to the nation of Israel. All right? There's a lot of scriptures that go into it, a lot. Right? <laughs> a lot of scriptures. Know, but um, um, I'm gonna um, just get a couple, all right. But this word world here, all right, you know, when you look it up in the Greek, it's cosmos, all right. It says after the harmonious arrangement, you know, and this is the thing, you know, if something's in harmony, something's moving together, you know? So, for example, you may have what? Like the sea world, animal world, you know, but this world is talking about the world of the Israelites, all right? That's what this world is referring to, okay? The world of the Israelites. A lot of, a lot of flying bugs and stuff, all right? This world isn't talking about everybody, all right? And you can look up these different uh, Greek words, you know, in the Blue Letter Bible to see what it means. Now, I'm going to get the one that was, that does talk about, you know, pretty much everybody. Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. And it says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And the word world here is strong, G, 3625, meaning the whole inhabited earth, the world. See? And that word is different from John 316, you know? That word world there is different from the one in John 3, 16, man. All right? You know, so... You know, um... It's a lot here. You know, so, pretty much, if John 3, 16 meant everybody, then that word world in the Greek should be used there. Okay? Then you got a period of time, age, all right? Which is... This is Matthew 24 and 3. 
And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And when shall what shall be the end the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You know, and that word world in the Greek, eon, meaning a period of time or age. Okay? But you know, just getting that out the way, all right, but you know, the world being spoken about is the Israelites in John 3 16. Okay? But there are there is some scriptures in the Old Testament, all right, that show us that the Lord don't is, ain't with everybody, man. You know? He's not. That's just the truth of the fact. That's just the truth of the matter. <laughs> okay? You know, what these these heathen nations, they're not equal to us. We have certain laws, you know, that we can um, you know, deal with. You know, pretty we, we have let me say it again, we have certain laws, you know, regarding these heathen nations, right? Now, one I recently went over today is uh or you know, to get into the day, this is Leviticus chapter 25. Starting in verse 39, right? And it says, And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, right? It says, But as an hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee, right? So, you know, back in the, uh, when we, you know, when we had our land and everything, you know, it says that brother talking about a fellow Israelite, all right, not just anybody on the planet Earth, all right, it's going to, it's going to get into it, but, you know, back then, all right, you know, we would have our own land, things like that, all right, and, you know, fellow brother have back and forth and sold onto us as a Hebrew servant, you can read Exodus, Exodus, I'll get it, actually, you know, why not, all right, Exodus 21, Verse 2, if thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve thee, and then the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. All right? You know, so you have a Hebrew servant, but this Hebrew servant, you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't, uh, you know, treat cruelly. All right? So Leviticus 25 and 40, but as an hired servant, and so Jordan, he shall be with thee, right? If you got a hired servant, for example, you, you work for somebody, they, you know, you work for an employer, employer, right? You work for any one of these businesses out here, you know, they, they don't treat you, you know, cruelly, they, you know, they treat you good, you know? Right? And it says, and as a sojourner, right, man, you know, if, uh, you know, pretty much, so, you know, pretend you have, Say you have family that you know live in another country and they came to you know, or or in another land and they came to you know live with you, you know, a little bit, right? You know, you would treat them good. Okay? You would be polite. So we have you have to treat this fellow Israelite as the same way, right? And once again it's regarding the fellow Israelites, right? You know? And it says and, and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. And then in the year of Jubilee. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family and unto the possession of his fathers, shall he return. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Okay? Verse 43. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shalt fear thy power. All right? Okay, rigor means goes into harshness, severity, cruelty. You know, so you can't, you know, bash them upside the head, you know. You can't treat them like that, okay. That was, you know, that's what a, a fellow Israelite, right. However, listen to this. Verse 44, both thy bondmen and bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. And of them shall you buy bondmen and bondmaids, all right. So, our slaves that we could treat cruelly said of the heathen. That are around about us okay you know so when we so we could have um salakia you know so we could have um you know slaves of the heathen all right you know we could have that man all right and treat them like that it says moreover of the children of the strangers which is talking about the heathen that do sojourn among you of them shall ye buy and of their families that are with you, 
which they begat in your possession, that they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for possession, right? You know, because you can, um, you know, you will keep them, right? You know what it says? They shall be your bondmen forever, see? So with a heathen nation, well, I'm gonna finish reading it. It says, but over your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule one over another with rigor. See, it doesn't say we can't rule over the heathen nations with, uh, you know, it doesn't say we can't rule over the heathens with cruelty. All right, you know, so we can do that, you know, but I say we can do that. I mean, I'm not saying go out here and, you know, do that to, you know, chain them up in your basement or no shit like that. No, don't, don't do that. All right, because we're in this society right now, but just saying, in general, in the laws, or you have a I was shy states in there that we could do these things, you know? Just checking the camera. All right, it states that we could do these things, okay? And, um, you know, it's lucky. So, it, <laughs> and it said we could have them forever, you know? This be your bombing forever, your slave, you know, your slaves forever. See, but with a he with it with an Israelite, a Hebrew servant, it said they in the seventh year they would go free. See? In the seventh year they would go free. Alright. You know. But with a with a heathen, you could have them. You know, and there's the thing, right? This is Leviticus 24. Starting verse 19, and if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, as he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. Right. You know, you cause a blemish, you know, in a um in, in an Israelite, that's it's, you know supposed to have it back to you. See? You can't because you can't you can't um you know you can't do that, but with a heathen, you know. You can um, you could be cruel, all right. See, so that even in itself shows you that we're not equal, all right. We're not equal to these heathen nations, man. See, the thing is, the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has made certain nations better than others. Okay. Well, when I say that, I mean, I mean, it's like I meant to say this: the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has made us Israelites, nation of Israel, so-called Black Hispanic Native Americans, better than the heathen nations. Which is anybody that's not those, all right? You know, on their father's side, okay? You know, the Lord made us better than them, man. This is the book of Deuteronomy. This is in the Bible. How are you going to argue? <laughs> you know, how are you going to argue? This? The book of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, and the sixth verse. When thou art in holy people. Ooh, what people? The Israelites. Unto Yahweh thy power. Yahweh thy power hath chosen thee, the Israelites, to be a special people unto himself, above all people upon that are upon the face of earth. Right? I read it again. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art in holy people. And that word holy in the Hebrew is kodash. And it means set apart. All right, the strongest H6918 if you want to look that up. But it means, holy means set apart. For example, if you have shoes, all right, and you, and you like those shoes and you set it apart from the rest of your shoe collection, all right, you know, those shoes are, you know, so-called holy to you, you know, et cetera, right? But the Lord did that with the nation of Israel. We're a holy, we're a separate people to the, uh, to the nation, you know, to the, to the, we're a set apart people to the Lord. So this shows that the Lord has favorites, you know, he, and he doesn't love everybody, okay? And it says, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. What does that mean? We're going to grow taller than everybody, etc. You know, well, I'll say it's in the kingdom we're going to be tall. But what this is saying is that, you know, we're pretty much better than them, you know? And you could even see it in sports, different, you know, different things in life, you know? How the Israelites, the so-called Black, Hispanic, Native Americans, are better than these, these other nations, right? You know? There is no such thing as the Lord loves every every nation on earth. No, he doesn't. That's just a misconception. That's, that's a false lie that the Christian church has been pushing out. All right? 
you know, and also this, this idea of equality that these heathen nations, you know, some so-called, or, you know, pretty much this false idea of equality that the so-called white man has been teaching every, or telling everybody, everybody's equal. Everybody ain't equal, man. You know? Let me get this. Somebody may say, well, you see, well, but you're only in the New Testament. You're only in the New Testament. Well, I'm about to go into the Old Testament. Somebody may say, well, you're in the Old Testament. You're in the Old Testament. I'm about to go in the New Testament in a minute. All right? I'm going to show you the same thing. It's the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 5, starting in verse 23. And said, O Lord, that bearest rule of every wood of the earth, and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee one only vine. Right. And that's the olive tree. So just going to the Lord's favorites. From, from that, from verse 23 down to verse 27, is going into the Lord's favorites, man. You know? So the Lord's favorite tree is the olive tree. Verse 24. And of all lands of the whole world, that's chosen you one pit. And the pit, and the land can be referred to as a pit. And it shows it right here. They call it a pit. And that pit is the land of Israel. This is not of all the flowers thereof one lily. And of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee one river. And of all builded cities, thou hast hallowed Zion unto thyself. And, all, and of all the fowls of the, and, all, and of all the fowls that are created, thou hast named thee one dove. And of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep. The Lord's favorite animal is the sheep. Here's the point, verse 27. And among all the multitudes of people, among all the heathen nations, thou hast gotten thee one people. Israelites and unto this people whom thou lovest unto this people whom thou lovest thou gavest the Lord that is approved of all see so the Lord only loves the Israelites he don't love all these different nations the people yeah he, yeah, he created them alright but still you could create something you could create stuff and have a favorite out of your creation you know Made, say you made six paintings, right? Say you made, you know, let's say, you know, say you made a whole bunch of paintings, right? You say, well, I like this painting. I like that painting. Or you have a whole lot of shoes in your closet. You say, well, I like these shoes oh, better than the rest of you. I like these shoes. Well, that's what the Lord did. Why can y'all have favorites and the Lord can't? You know? Okay? Second Ezra chapter 6, starting in verse 53. Upon the sixth day thou gavest commandment unto the earth that before thee it should bring forth beasts and beasts, cattle and creeping things. And after these, Adam also whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. See, so everybody comes from Adam, right? Including the Israelites. Verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. And that, that touches that evolution theory right there saying we come from monkeys. We don't come from no damn monkeys, man. All right? Verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. So the earth was created for the sake of the Israelites. All right? It's in the Bible. I'm reading it right now. Verse 56. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. They are the nations. As right? so for the other people that also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like an spittle. See? And that's like the abundance of them until a drop that falls from a vessel, right? The abundance of them, like a drop fall from a vessel. We got a bucket of water. You know, you see this red lake right here, right? You got a bucket of water, and you, you got a bucket, you dip that bucket of water into the lake, and you bring it up. The whole bucket is filled with water. But, it, you know, it's little droplets on the outside of the bucket. You ain't gonna care about that. You know? You're gonna, um, you, you know, you're going to, um, you know, you're going to care more about the bucket of water. So that's how the Lord feels about these heathens. You see, the nations, he doesn't care about them, man. Everybody is not equal. When we get in power, you're definitely, you're going to definitely see that everybody's not equal. Right? You know, that these heathen nations, they're not equal to the uh, nation of Israel. All right? The Israelites are that golden nation out of this whole world. All right? Be happy if you're an Israelite. It says... All right, so I read that, right? Now someone say to the New Testament, well, 
the New Testament, you know, when we say John 3.16 and all these all these things, man, look, you know, and it just said all it said all be in Rome and you know the churches and you know the Gentiles, the Gentiles are that that you know believed and woke up to the truth and got and repented, those are Israelites. Right? This word is only been preached to Israelites. The book of Acts. Chapter 10. And verse 36. The word which Yahweh sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yahweh Shahmashiach. He is Lord of all. So the word, the, the truth is only for Israel, okay? The Israelites, all right? And then let me get something else. These are heavy hitters. Acts 5, verse 31. So we'll start from verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Yahweh Shai, right? The one the world literally calls Jesus. But Yahweh Shai ain't no so-called white man with stringy hair. The so-called black man from the tribe of Judah, right? Verse 31, him, Yahweh Shai, hath Yahweh exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. So, these Christians telling everybody to repent, all nations to repent. The repentance is only for Israel, all right? <laughs> it's only for the Israelites. See? Now, we jump here. Acts 13, 23. Of this man's seed hath Yahweh, according to his promise, promise raised unto Israel a savior. Yahweh shy, see, but unto Israel a savior. Okay? You know? And guess what, man? You know, things, people, you know, uh, you know, things ain't changing in the New Testament, man. You know, all of a sudden in the New Testament, the Lord loves everybody. No. If that's the case, why did Yahweh shy say this? Because Yahweh shy, right? book of revelation you know when um he was telling you know the apostle john to send these messages this message and things to the churches you know some of the churches in uh asia the seven churches in asia minor you know he was telling them when well, he was telling the apostle john when yahweh shy was telling the apostle john to go ahead and do this you know yahweh shy you know different messages from different churches over there which these churches are churches of israelites all right you know when they were um doing that, all right, sending, it's like when Yahweh Shai was, you know, sending it, sending those, uh, those messages, all right, this is one thing that, you know, he said, Revelation chapter 2, starting in verse 25, but that, which is his faith, which he have already, hold fast till I come, so to hold on to the faith, right, till Yahweh Shai returns, verse 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, so, you know, the men, to the men that endure to the end, hold on to the faith which are going to be the elect to him will I give power over the nations, over the nations man, over the heathens over the heathen nations so how is everybody equal this is in the, this is in the last book of the, new te of the Bible, which is in the New Testament <laughs> how if these Gentiles so called, you know, these Gentiles were the heathen nations, you know, that got um, that got um these Gentiles that were the heathen nations got um, repentance and everything. If these Gentiles were the heathen nations and they had got repentance, well, how was then? How does this? How does this work? You know? How are they? How, how are they still gonna? How are they gonna have? How is somebody gonna have power with them? You know? So the Gentiles in the New Testament are Israelites. You know that got that repented and everything. You know? says to him will I give power over the nations over the heathen you see so even here yeah it's showing everybody's not equal you see the Bible don't contradict itself somebody going in slavery okay it talked about slavery in the Old Testament you hear Yahweh Shai himself is saying that uh you know we're going to have power over the heathen nations you see verse 27 and he shall rule them with the rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers you see as the vessels of a potter shall be broken in shivers. Talking about beating up the heathens. So how is everybody equal? Even as I received my father. Boom. Okay. 
how is everybody equal, man? It don't make sense. Everybody is not equal, right? Everybody ain't equal, man. All right. Yeah, the Lord has favorites. So we just, we really just went through it. Okay. You know, these Christian churches, they would never, you know, want to go into those things. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, let me say, go, not never want to go into them. They try to refute, but you can't refute the Bible. You know, it's either you understand it or you don't. That's really what it boils down to. You either understand it or you don't. The Lord, if the Lord gave you the ear, the spiritual eyes and ears to hear, see spiritually or not and only the elect have it right so the bible does not contradict itself okay so you know just wanted to you know make this lesson real quick Lord willing was that a fine we all ain't equal man all right the israelites are the best nation in the world you know so-called negroes west indians haitians latinos native american indians and stubborn indians all right the lord willing that was that lesson was edifying i want to give all the praises honor and glory to whom it rightfully belongs Cheers to Yahweh, Baha'u Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha'u Shem, Baha'u Dash, that will honestly be possible to elders of great millstone that we will. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. Peace is the Hebrew, Shalom, Shalom to the elect.